Good morning, everybody. Michael the Maven here. And in today's episode of the Maven Nation, I am going to ruin your experience with many of your favorite products. Okay, maybe not ruin, but I'm going to give you some incredible tools to measure the usability of a product. This includes hardware as well as software. First, let me say thank you to our sponsor, Proven Nutrition. They make an incredible energy drink that I use every time I work out. It's low glycemic, no caffeine, it has electrolytes, amino acids, herbs that will help you speed your recovery. It's a really outstanding product, it tastes amazing. They have agreed to send you a free sample if you wanna try it out, just cover shipping and handling. I'll put that link in the description. Thank you, Proven Nutrition. So in today's episode of the Maven Nation, we're going to be talking about usability. This is something that I posted a video on the Canon EOS R recently. And I had many people attacking. If you want some good laughs, go read some of the comments back and forth, you know, behind the scenes. It's kind of funny because people get so angry when any criticism is offered about a, a beloved product. So they own the product and here comes Michael, you know, saying this isn't really usable. Boy, they take that personally and they attack. And, and I've gotten used to that on YouTube. My job as a camera reviewer is to tell you the strengths and weaknesses. The definition of usability is the ease of use. How easy is this product to use? And there are some definitions that allow us to break this down further. But one set of definitions is referred to as accessibility. How accessible is something? And the first two parts of this are perceptibility, which means a person's ability to perceive what the product is and operability, which means everybody should be able to operate it regardless of their skill set or their physical abilities. So perceptibility, if we were to take an example of like an elevator, when you walk into an elevator, do you understand what this is and do you understand what the controls are and how it works? Okay, there's numbers, there's literally numbers and buttons, right? Another thing about the elevator example is that you'll often see braille next to the push buttons, which means if somebody's blind and they can't see the buttons, they still have a way to operate it. That is the heart of the matter with operability. Everybody should be able to use it regardless of what their physical capabilities are. The third part of accessibility is simplicity. I refer to this as efficiency or the number of steps it takes to do something. So every time you add another step to operate a control on a camera, that makes it less efficient. And so the thing that I was frustrated with was changing back and forth between the video and the shooting modes, you know, for stills, which is something that I do all the time. Four or five times on a shoot, I'll do that. And I don't wanna have to press three extra buttons every single time I do that. I want that physical dedicated switch I can just flip over so the simplicity really has to do with how easy it is to get in there and, and make these changes. The elevator example, you push one button, everything's automated after that. So many commenters on that EOS R usability video were talking about, well, just customize it. If a user needs to go in to customize something in order to get it to work correctly, that straight up conflicts with the simplicity cause. Finally, we have something called forgiveness which means that if you bump something or you accidentally do something, it's not going to be the end of the world. So those first four things, which is perceptibility, operability, simplicity, and forgiveness, you can find examples where Canon fell short on every single one of those with the EOS R. For me, that's black and white. Now, there are some other parts of usability that come into play. Things like recognition. Is this something that is easily recognizable between their products. Do you notice any changes? And we'll, we'll show some contrast here in a second. Another part is memorability. How hard is it to remember these controls? Is it something that's really easy to remember or is it something that requires effort? And then there's also feedback. How is the customer able to get feedback about their controls? We have a monitor, obviously, it's pretty straightforward. All of these things combine to give an overall experience referred to as satisfaction. And so when we're shooting with cameras that are unfamiliar or, or maybe the controls are different or software or whatever it is, and we feel this dissatisfaction, you should be able to go through that list and find something that has failed. And this is what happens if I pick up something and, I'm, and I don't like it. I'm like, why is it I don't like this? 
and I'll go through it. I'm like, oh, it's the number of button presses. So the question that you may have is how do camera manufacturers figure this out? The answer is iterations. An iteration is a version, version 1.0, 1.1, version two. Those are all iterations. It can be referred to as a generation of a camera. It, there's a fantastic book called The Lean Startup. They talk about it in terms of software company development. They basically say, fail fast, fail cheap, fail often. And what they mean by that is that you want to get this in the hands of your consumers and get feedback from them. And as they talk about it, you're gonna say, okay, this is something that we need to change. So iterations are based on failing, okay? And so if we were to take a walk down memory lane and look at the 10D through the 80D, all cameras that I've owned, this is very interesting. Take a look at the 10D, which came out way back when, I think it was like 2003, it had a 1.8 inch monitor, teeny tiny. There are watches that have bigger monitors than that. Look at the two switches, one for power and one for lock. Look at the size of the control wheel, right? So when the Canon 20D came out, you'll notice a couple subtle changes. We get a joystick. We get the lock switch and the power switch combined. We still have a teeny monitor, but by the time the, the 30D comes along, lo and behold, now we have a larger monitor. So there's also some sensor things going on is that the resolution's increasing. The 10D was a six megapixel camera. The 20 and the 30D were eight megapixels, which brings us to the Canon 40D, a very successful camera. This is when I started making my training videos. I, I love that camera so much. And you'll notice some other things that changed. Bigger monitor, gotta move the buttons underneath to make it fit. Now we have a back button for autofocus. So after the 40D comes the 50D, and not a whole lot changed here, but there was a huge increase in megapixels from 10 to 15. So the Canon 60D came out, and to me, the 60D in some ways was a downgrade because they took away the joystick, and yeah, we got a flippy monitor, which was awesome, but how could you change the focusing squares? We had to use your control wheels, which was a nightmare. It just wasn't that great. Which brought us to the Canon 70D, which was a touchy monitor, and very efficient, very refined after many iterations. You're going to see something like this on most higher end Canon cameras. By the time we get to the Canon 80D, we're seeing an eighth generation camera. Just look at that compared to the 10D and how far it came. It's a very polished, refined product. Still no joystick, but we have this secondary control wheel that allows us to move things around. I think the joystick should be on there. But in any event, Canon was listening to the feedback of their customers and they're evolving this camera. They're making it more simple. They're making it more accessible. They're putting these refinements into the product as it develops. And so by the time we take something like the 80D, and we compare it to the EOS R, look at the stark contrast. Where is the familiarity? Where is the perceptibility? The ease of use in terms of the operation. I, I demonstrated left eye versus right eye dominant. You know, how forgiving is, is it when you bump it? These are the problems that I had with the EOS R. So in summary, the usability of a product is the ease of use. It goes far beyond personal preference. This is something that can actually be measured. So take all those things together combined and it should give an overall satisfaction. So if you experience a product that you're unsatisfied, one of those things is going to be violated and you'll be able to go in and figure out what it is and why you're not happy with the product. So in any event, that is today's episode of the Maven Nation. Thank you guys for joining us. Once again, thanks to our sponsor, Proven Nutrition. Check out CoreFit, it's in the description below. What design topics would you like me to tackle on the next episode of the Maven Nation? Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.